What is happening, everyone? It's Twos. It's your boy Dion, and I am back at you guys again with yet another uh, Casual Geographic reaction video. So today we're going to be taking a look at this video right here. Um, if you need to go ahead and check out the original video, I should go ahead and leave a link down below to the original video. Usually I'll leave a link directly to his uh, channel so that way anyone can go ahead and check it out if you end up needing to. But yeah, if you guys are enjoying my reactions, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos just like this one. Uh, make sure you like me, love me, and talk to me down below. And let's jump directly into the video. <clears throat> so a lot of y'all tagged me and wanted to know what that is. And honestly, I don't really know. Okay, that was kind of capped. The maid wolf and a pretty common in Brazil and Argentina. But they're not wolves, they're not foxes, they're not even cross-dressing coyotes, they're kind of just their own thing, and they are really weird. Because even though they're technically related to wolves, most of their grocery list is just fruits and vegetables. Like that one mm -hmm. that brings a veggie burger to a cookout. Now that I'm saying that out loud, they're basically the pandas of dogs. Also, they smell like Snoop Dogg Studio, to the point where police were called to a Dutch zoo to investigate what they thought was burning bush when it was actually just still puppies piss. Also, they straight up what? sound like an identity crisis. <laughs> See what I mean when I say they're just weird as hell? They honestly look like what happens when God's on a deadline. On a serious note, in 2011, a main wolf got run over by a truck and left to die. But a Brazilian zoo managed to save her life by treating her with stem cells, making her the first wild animal to ever be treated with stem cell therapy, and eventually she was released back into the wild. Just thought that was cool. That's for nature just be making up, because what if I told you what you just saw was some weird prehistoric water-loving jungle rhino? Well, I wouldn't what? Be lying. That is a bear's taper and is basically the less clouded cousin of horses and rhinoceroses. Rhinoceroses? Well, I've seen you that might one. recognize them from Ice Age. Or it might remind you of Jowsy because this Pokemon... Yeah, now I've seen that animal before, okay? I've seen that animal come up a couple of different times, different a uh, couple of different ways. It's this animal that I have the weirdest issue with. This animal right here, like, some head and took a fucking fox and then just elongated the the arms out arms and neck out and now we have this like somebody was like you know what would be pretty damn dope let's take take a fox and then we'll take the the elongated tool from photoshop and you just elongate their their legs out a little bit and that's what they got that's where nature just be making because what if I told you what you just saw was some weird prehistoric water-loving jungle rhino? Well, I wouldn't exactly be lying. That is a bear's taper and is basically the less clouded cousin of horses and rhinoceroses. Rhinoceroses? You might recognize them from Ice Age. Or it might remind you of Jowzy because this Pokemon is actually based on a Malayan taper. And that's because in Japanese mythology, the Malayan taper would devour the nightmares of all the townsfolk to make sure everyone had good dreams. The bear's taper is the national animal of Belize, and even though it looks like a rough draft rhino, its nickname is actually the Mountain Cow. <laughs> the mountain way, cow up to 800 pounds with a horse's mouthpiece they're 100 capable of f***ing you all the way up well damn about them that um i'm not proud that i know this basically tapers have a fifth leg and they've been known to use that meat tripod as a back scratcher because God what online, i'm not gonna show you instead here's AS what <laughs> their, their thing is so long they can use it as a back scratcher what what what, what type of shit what? Like, like, God, what did you do? Like, you were just like, oh, this, this they're gonna have a kick out of this shit. This is gonna be funny. Aww. He's so fucking cute, though. Oh, wait, I think I've seen this. This little guy is a stroll for his gecko, and it's found in only one place in the world, and it's in the land down under. Nah, it's not of course. It's Australia, but I wouldn't blame you for getting your tube mixed up. To defend itself, this gecko shoots out a harmless but nasty smelling liquid at anyone that wants to find out just how far evolution went with this lizard. And even though I just said it was harmless, when mixed with ammonia it becomes flammable and a lot fucking less harmless. The reason is because these geckos often get picked off by birds. So these chameleons use that money shot to convince birds that they're not even worth the effort of trying to eat them. It's like spider- <sighs> So you basically are so afraid of getting taken out by a bird that you just shoot jizz all over them? That sounds about right. Like, why? Like, that's the that, that's your defense mechanism? That's the defense mechanism you came up with? Oh, yeah, I want to go ahead and make sure that no bird tries to eat me. So what I'll do is just shoot jizz all over them. Man, but instead of wet <laughs> for breeze of liquid ass, that probably tastes just as bad. I was considering making a jizzer joke, but it just didn't come to me. 
<laughs> Is that a flower? Eat, eat a, try to so eat a crab. This, I thought it was a black sea here, a giant species of sea slug, but it turns out the truth is somehow weirder than that. This crab is being eaten alive by a worm, specifically a marine flatworm, part of the group Pseudocerus. They're the ones that have those PP sword fights where one tries to get the other pregnant by stabbing it. And those oh. guys, the reason the flatworm's covering the crab is because it's trying to invert its digestive system so it can literally digest the crab from the outside. Or option two, it'll spit digestive juices into the crab, wait for the crab to become a pre-digested paralyzed soup, and then slurp it through its mouth. Also, some flatworms will use poison to cripple their prey just so they can eat them alive. And the poison some of them use is a toxin called tetrodotoxin. That sounds familiar, it's the same toxin that makes the blue ring octopus and the fugu blowfish so dangerous. And by dangerous, I mean this octopus yeah. can turn 26 grown men into hashtags. Like, it'll immediately just concert. destroy you. Not points, but bodies. Moral of this video? Yeah, that crab is... These teeth belong to the world's scariest vegan. This is a gelata baboon, and even though its teeth looks like it should belong to a saber-toothed cat, they eat almost nothing but grass, and they'll spend all day grazing like cows. And they'll do this while rolling up in squads of up to 600. That is a gelata monkey. And that joke is <laughs> that's just a lot of speaking monkeys. Speaking of failed relationships, they cheat on each other like all the time. Normally, only the dominant male is allowed to mate, but sometimes the females will go behind his back and hook up with the lower ranking monkeys, and they'll even suppress their usual mating noises just so they don't get caught. They what? Have, the male can turn the side piece into a hashtag. So, yeah, they know what they're doing. They're also called bleeding heart monkeys because of that bright patch of skin on their chest. If you have a weak stomach, hide in the comments. You're not going to like this one. Because when a female gelata's in heat, she'll start growing this weird ass blister neck. Uh no! Uh, get off the screen! Get off the screen! Next, next, next! I almost forgot to mention this, but they'll flip their lips and expose their teeth to intimidate a rival or someone who's just too close in general. And considering sometimes they'll form gangs and bully other animals like leopards, yeah, you don't want those problems. Now, what if I told you not only is this skull real, the animal it belonged to very well could have been your neighbor. If you live in North America or some parts of Asia, this thing could have made its home in your backyard. This is the headpiece of Metaminodon planiforms. It was a semi-aquatic unit of an animal related to the rhino. Uh, today. Basically, it looked like it's more related to a hippo. Together, this disrespect to the natural order is what would have walked out. Metaminodon was estimated to grow to 13 feet long and break the scales at 4,000 pounds. Like hippos, this walking bus of an animal would have grazed on mostly grass. But they also would have used those tusks to run phase with each other in the evolutionary arms race for female validation. And also, like hippos and crocodiles, Metaminodon's eyes were near the top of its head, meaning it could see you while being almost completely submerged underwater. And just like the homicide horse and tail, Metaminodon would have been a fing problem. But this swamp rhino got vaulted about 35 million years ago. Because even nature knows when to stop the gimmick. <laughs> nah, it's just me, but check this out. This is one of the most endangered animals in the entire world, and there's not much time left for them. This is a vaquita, and scientists believe there can be less than 10 of them in existence. Aquita? Just a little background, a vaquita is a type of porpoise, and a porpoise is just a Dollar Tree dolphin that no one seems to really know about. And it oh, so it's basically like a, a baby version of a dolphin. Kind of like a, a dog is to a wolf or something like that. This off-brand flipper exists in only one place. Or a lion and a leopard, I guess you would say. On the entire mm. planet. The only place in the world you can find it is in the Gulf of California and Baja California in Mexico. Even though it's related to literally the biggest animals in the world, at less than five feet long, the vaquita is the smallest of all living cetaceans, which is a group that includes blue whales, the biggest threat to this travel-sized dolphin is they keep getting caught in fishing gear, which causes them to drown. To show you how badly we hold this make-a-wish whale, 1997, there was believed to be something like 600 of them. That number dipped to 245 in 2008. Now there aren't enough in the world to run a game of full-court basketball. The worst part is they were first discovered in 1958, which means we managed to pack their entire up in only 60 years. The Mexican government banned fishing with gill nets, which was their biggest threat. There's also petitions like this to raise awareness. Freaking bio. Why don't they just make like a do the same thing they do with pandas? Make like a little small habitat or whatever like that, and and uh yeah, like just make a little small habitat, just enclose them in and allow them to live their lives to where they Freaking won't be able to go ahead and get honest, get attacked. It might just be. <laughs> This episode of animals that were never God's favorite, squids have a donut-shaped brain with their esophagus running through it. The donut shape actually helps them link information that they receive between the two eyes. But it also means squids are forced to eat with small bites at a time. Because if a squid tries to swallow something too big, it can actually mess around and give itself severe brain damage. 
The whole damn. Damn. It's not even that big. It's like less than half an inch. Which means something like a Popeye's biscuit would give them an aneurysm. That is, if it didn't pass tense them instantly. Giant squids avoid getting flatlined by their food because they have a radula, which is basically a tongue with teeth. So if a giant squid tried to eat you, it would first tear you to shreds with that nightmare of a tongue before swallowing you. And only after grinding you into human dirt would the squid be able to pass you down its throat. Now nobody's oh. having to eat basically flavored sand for your entire life just so you don't accidentally back up and set yourself. Just seems like an intentional cue from me. People wanted me to react to this, so basically there's an animal draft that I have many thoughts. Most people choose between a good time and a long time, and Team 1 said f*** it and chose me. You failed the assignment when the most intimidating animal on your roster is this. <laughs> That's so cute. We love dogs, but if you only have one, it's not going to take you very far. Bison are cool, but since evolution put them and put two of their lungs in one cavity, for an animal built like a tank, they're pretty easy to one-shot. Sea turtles are dope, but you picked an animal that can get folded by a Ziploc bag. Team 1, it's up to you. <coughs> Team 2, you used a second overall pick on a steroid weasel. Now that tells me all I need to know. Maybe yep. they don't put the crocodile and the Komodo dragon, and elk isn't exactly terrible, but your team does lack one very important thing. <coughs> I got no type of speed. And notice how I didn't even acknowledge the koala. Because unless it's very hard to awake every day, the koala isn't going to be a factor. Even if it was, it wouldn't be good for much except spreading chlamydia to the other teams. Now we get into the real shit. Team 5, you start off strong by picking the largest land predator on the planet with the polar bear. I guess you ran out of to give because then you picked the African bullfrog and followed it up with a genetic disaster that is the liger. Technically, the liger is the biggest big cat on the planet. But they don't live long. There's also a walking medical bill that can suffer from arthritis, organ failure, and cancer. You wouldn't even have to kill the liger. Time will do it for you. Yeah, ligers don't live long at all. Highest recorded bite force at 3,700 pounds per square inch. It's kind of like getting hit with a prehistoric sledgehammer. Oh, poor kitty. Literally nicknamed Black Death in the Cape Buffalo. Not bad. But honestly, none of that even matters because Team 4 did y'all dirty. Team 3 is tough. I am not denying that. But any team with the largest animal on land. Yep, the elephant. The actual largest big cat because ligers have no business. Tiger. And the psychopath of the sea is going 82-0. And, if you and speak, they have horses for speed. Body hippos, a horse could kick a cat's where his lights out. A tiger would murk kangaroo jack. This is what orcas do to sharks. Yep. A panda, I ain't gonna lie to you, he's just there for vibes. Basically, it comes down to this. Nothing on land is f***ing with an elephant. Nothing in water is checking the orcas. Adding a tiger is just great. Team 4 got it. I, I thought so. Because Team 4 looks like they have it all thought out. Like, they, they went ahead and, and just thought everything thought everything out um like with strategy like they're playing like fucking chess or something like that or magic the gathering or something but yeah hope you guys enjoyed my reaction if you did be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos just like this one make sure you like me love me and talk to me down below and i'm gonna see you guys in the next video peace